Carlo he remembers. The fat controller had sent Edward to the works to be mended. Near the works station, Edward noticed a narrow gauge engine standing in an open sided shed. That's Scarlowe, he thought. What's he doing there? He remembered Scarlowe and his brother Renius, because in the old days he had often brought passengers who wanted to travel up to the lake in their little train. As the men at the works could not mend him at once, Edward asked them to put him on a siding close to Scarlowe. Scarlowe was pleased to see Edward. The owner has just bought two more engines, he said. He told me I was a very old engine and deserved a good rest. He gave me this shed so that I could see everything and not be lonely. But I am lonely all the same, he continued sadly. I miss Renius very much. Yesterday, one of the new engines pushed him on a truck. And now he's gone to be mended. I wish I could be mended too and pull coaches again. Have your coaches got names? asked Edward. Oh, yes. There's Agnes, Ruth, Jemima, Lucy and Beatrice. Agnes is proud. She has cushions for first-class passengers. She pities Ruth, Jemima and Lucy, who are third-class with bare boards. But they all four sniff at Beatrice. Beatrice often smells of fish and cheese, but she is most important, said Scarlowe earnestly. She has a little window through which the guard sells tickets. I sometimes leave the others behind, but I always take Beatrice. You must have tickets and a guard, you know. Of course, said Edward gravely. Renius and I, continued Scarlowe, used to take turns at pulling the trains. We know everybody and everybody knows us. We whistle to the people in the fields, at level crossings, and in lonely cottages and farms. And the people always wave to us. We love passing the school playgrounds at break time. And then the children will always run over to the fence to watch us go by. The passengers always wave because they think the children are waving to them. But we engines know better, of course, said Scarlowe importantly. Yes, we do indeed, agreed Edward. We take your tourists to the lake and then get ready to pull the train back. We enjoy the morning journey home, because then our friends from the villages come down to do their shopping. We whistle before every station, peep, peep, look out, and the people are there ready. Where's Mrs. Last? asks the guard. She's coming. Peep, peep, we whistle, and Mrs. Last comes running onto the platform. We'll leave you behind one of these days, Mrs. Laughs our driver, but we know he never will. We stop elsewhere, too at farm crossings and stiles, where paths lead to lonely houses. Renius and I know all the places very well indeed, and our driver used to say that we would stop even if he didn't put on the brakes. Sometimes on market day, Ruth, Jemima and Lucy were so full of people that the guard would allow third-class passengers to travel in Agnes. She didn't like that at all, and would grumble first Class coach, third class people. That made me cross. Shut up, I'd say, or I'll bump you. That soon stopped her rudeness to my friends. Just then, some workmen came. We're going to mend you now, Edward, they said. Come along. Well, goodbye, Scarlowe. Thank you for telling me about your railway. It's a lovely little line. It is, it is. Thank you for talking to me, Edward. You've cheered me up. Goodbye. Scarlowe watched Edward being taken back to the works. Then, shutting his eyes, he dozed in the warm afternoon sun. He smiled as he dozed, for he was dreaming, as old engines will, of happy days in the past. <laughs>